am back with another affordable, accessible watercolor review. And today we're taking a look at the Daler and Rowney Aquafine mini travel set. Now these are available in like four different sets. The little donut set, which is pretty ubiquitous. I think everybody has seen that set. This one is a little bit less expensive. Not that any of them are expensive. They're all 20-ish or below. This was one of the cheaper of the sets. And so it's also one of the smaller sets. So we've got a little metal tin and we've got some information. So I'm gonna read the information to you guys first. Watercolor mini travel set. A perfect pocket size set for every watercolor artist. The Aquafine watercolor range has been specifically formulated to provide the watercolorists with vibrant, free flowing, transparent colors, which can be mixed for endless creative possibilities. This set is an ideal travel companion of 10 half pan colors and a mini brush, conveniently presented in a compact case featuring a thumb ring and a detachable palette. And then we've got that in multiple languages. And let me see if I can, there we go. Oh, okay, okay, so hidden underneath. To keep colors fresh and bright, limit yourself to mixes of only two or three colors and don't over mix. You can mix colors in a palette or let them merge on damp paper. Red, blue, and yellow are the primary colors. Mix two together to create a secondary color. When mixing two colors in a palette, the general rule is to start with the predominant color and add the tinting color to it. The predominant color would be, say, for example, um, let's say you want to make a yellow green. So you'd start with a lot of yellow and then slowly start adding a little bit of blue. All right, so this is our little tin. It's kind of an unusual shape. A little thumb ring makes it ideal for say plain air or travel watercolor, watercoloring on the go. So if you're buying this for an urban sketcher, this could be a good one. It has a hinged lid. The brush is actually not terrible and that's surprising because these little sets usually have terrible brushes. You can remove these weirdly shaped little, they're just awfully, awfully steep. Uh, you can remove this and fill this with water and you can also do your mixing up here. And we've got, okay, all right. So on one of my pans, you've got a sticker but on one of your my pans it has actually <laughs> become one with the paint itself and everything inside is made of plastic and there are no replaceable wells once this is done you pop it out of its hole i don't know that you could buy more paints so what you would do if you wanted to refill this is instead of buying half pans, you would buy um, two watercolors like this here and squirt it on in there. And the colors we got are 651 Lemon Yellow, 620 Cadmium Yellow Hue, 588 Vermilion Hue, 515 Alizarin Crimson, 315 Prussian Blue, 123 Ultramarine, 355 Leaf Green, 382 Viridian Hue, 663 Yellow Ochre, 221 Burnt Sienna. And what's neat, I don't know if this is on purpose or not, but they have one of those protective screens on here. Don't know what that is about. So you could keep this and use it to in fact, I took it out because I thought it was, I thought it was garbage. Um, let me see if I can put that back in. You can use that to kind of protect your colors from going all over the place. And this thing has been attached via what? Glue? Tape? I don't know, I can't tell. This thing has been attached at the bottom. So you can't actually easily pull this little plastic tray out. It's Scooch this in if possible. Get that back in fighting order if possible. Wow, dang, dang. Come on, you. Let's go. It says no. It says you broke me and I'll never be the same. And that is just where we are in my life. All right, so inside is a travel size for Aquafine. 
and it is one of the nicer freebie watercolor brushes. So a dunk in water to remove the sizing. I'm gonna go get a clean cup of water and I'll be right back. So we've got one cup clean water. We've got one palette and we've got some fluid easy block watercolor paper. And the first thing I wanna do is I'm gonna use this tiny ridiculous four, which is a little smaller than a four. And I'm gonna add some water to every pan, get them all activated, get them all excited, ready for swatching. And then we shall begin. And we're starting with lemon yellow and you can tell that this has a bundle of glycerin in it because I, it barely had time to activate and the color is just gooping right off onto my brush. So those of you who like to watercolor, what is your favorite inexpensive set? For me, it's Sakura Koi. I know it has its flaws, but I'm very familiar with it. I've been using them for almost six years now for my con watercolors. So I'm aware of said flaws and I'm cool with said flaws and I work around them. Now it's not my go-to set. It's my, really? I missed some colors here. Uh-huh, miss one of the blues. I'll just do it down here. Yep, got him. Okay, so lemon yellow, cad yellow hue, vermilion hue, alizarin crimson, Prussian blue, ultramarine, which is really more of an indigo color right now, uh, leaf green, Viridian hue, yellow ochre, and burnt sienna. So we're gonna let these dry. They look a little opaque. So we're gonna let these dry and we're gonna do an opacity test with a black marker and it is a Prismacolor marker in black. And I'm just gonna use this nice, healthy sized synthetic watercolor brush. But tell me below what your favorite, so I don't wanna say student grade because I've been reviewing a lot of watercolors intended for children lately. Um, but these are more like beginner artists or like college level artists, someone who um, maybe likes watercolor but they don't do a lot of it or uh, they're not sure if they wanna do a lot of it or they don't have the budget to do uh, for different materials. And I've, refu I've reviewed a few. That's kind of why I'm asking you guys. Um, one of my friends said that she prefers Cotman over Koi. And I mean, it's all personal preference. Um, but I just, I hate Cotman. <laughs> you guys can actually check out my Cotman field test here on this channel. Um, but I might end up disliking these even more. In fact, I reviewed the Daler and Rowney Simply Watercolors. They're two watercolors as part of my affordable art supply series. And you can check that out at natosu.blogspot.com. I think I like these better than I liked those, but I probably like these maybe on par with Cotman. I feel like Cotman, for me, they take longer to activate and the color is weaker, whereas these have a lot of glycerin. So, but then the Koi have a lot of optical brighteners. So you can only get so many layers out of them. So really, it really is all about what you like, what kind of art you make and what your preferences are. So I'm interested in seeing what you guys enjoy for this range of watercolors. So I'm gonna check in with you guys when these dry. So these colors are about dry. That viridian green is still a little bit wet. They don't contain as much glycerin as I thought they would. Although the Prussian blue is sort of sedimenting out already. 
I guess this means we're gonna have to put these through the field test. So I will see you guys in another video. I'll see you guys in the field test video. So if you're eager to see how these perform, keep an eye out for that. While you're here, why don't you check out some of my other videos in my watercolor playlist or head on over to natosoup.blogspot.com for my free F-R-E-E -E watercolor course. I take you from paint to papers to brushes. I teach you everything I know and I share my favorite resources with you guys and it's still in progress. I'm gonna teach you guys how to paint watercolor comic pages like I do or at least inspire you to give it a shot, to be brave and do it yourself. So I will see you guys in the field test video and let me know in the comments what your favorite student grade inexpensive watercolor set is. Bye guys.